Hey, what is up, you guys? Welcome back to Otaku. We're, as always, doing the special <laughs> Mangaku, <laughs> where we go through and read all of the Jump Tezuka. Jose is in reverse world today, as always, joined by Josh as well. So, For those of you that don't know about Jump Tezuka, it is a special contest that Weekly Shonen Jump and Tezuka do, where they... Normally, I think it's Japan only. They request for entries to their manga contest, and they're going to pick one that's going to be serialized inside of Weekly Shonen Jump. And the way it works is it's open global, so all entries can be sent in, which means we can read them. So that is the premise. We're going to read some of the submissions. We're going to pick our winner at the end, so we're going to do three this video, and then uh, hopefully we'll find the true winner eventually. The three we're doing this video are Interviewing No One, Live Line Mode, and Common Students. Is it Cayman or Common? I think I it's common. I think it's common. Yeah, because like yeah. common writer, right? I think it's yeah. I think it's yeah, common. Yeah. So I'll be going first, then we'll be doing live line mode, and then we'll be doing common students. So starting off with interviewing no one. This one is by Hagiwara Di Diplito. I hope I said that right. I think uh, it's just Diplo. <laughs> yeah, the famous DJ wrote this one. Huge fan. This one is pretty short and pretty weird. Yeah. So basically two kids show up at a uh, Mangaka's house and his name is No One and they refer to him as Mr. Wan and the door opens and it's like a sponge or something. Do, do any of like, you guys have any idea? Bag, like a you paper know, bag puppet? Me being me, I thought it was a tortilla. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it can either be a sponge, a paper bag or a tortilla. They're all legitimate answers. I don't know what he is. Just like most art, though, Sam, I would say it's open to interpretation. <laughs> okay. And I think yes, that's yes, where yes. this, this uh, is yes. really going. Let's, let's, let's grab our glasses of wine, boys. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so he opens, and he says his name is actually No One, but like with a squiggly above the O. So I don't know if you pronounce yeah. that differently. I don't know. We're, we're fucked. Um, so. And he's a mangaka. So... That being said, I immediately went to Google to see if he's actually a real mangaka, and it's maybe oh. it is maybe an actual interview that this like, that is like being turned into a manga. It's not. The only see, person with the name of one is the One Punch Man author. Oh, okay. And he's like oh, all his name is one. Yeah, his name's one, and but he's like oh. all caps, just regular one. That's his name. Oh. Uh, anyways, back to interviewing no one. He recently concluded his serial run of R and R Man is the manga that he was popular for, and so they're coming to interview him and they're kind of asking him what other ideas are going to be doing. First one yeah. he suggests is a knockoff of an already existing manga and anime series called Kaiji, where basically it's a high risk gambling situation. That's been there, oh. done that. I thought that was like original Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, a little bit. That's kind of more like yeah, similar. But Kaiji is legitimate, like gambling on stuff. Um, and then he mentions how he does a bunch of different art because he believes that the art should fit the story, the genre, the tone, yeah. and, you know, all of that. Which is uh, cool. I like that. It is cool. It's very unique because usually a lot of artists, they get the same art style all the way through. He mentions after that that he is a fan of horror and drama. Those are his favorites. Horror, not whores. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we don't know. He just oh, didn't yeah, say. True. We don't know. If he's then, the hand puppet, you know. <laughs> true. And so he starts kind of throwing out ideas for stuff that he would like to do or, like, ideas that he has of, like, a classroom stuck in the Wild West, an ogre who fights monsters, and then for, like, a drama one about becoming a Kami Shibaya. Did you guys know what that was, by the way, before him? No. I, I... It's basically a picture story show is the literal definition on Google, but it's basically like a, a puppet show, but, like, they're little papers. So kind of like Paper Mario, you know? Huh. There you go. Well, thank you for all that research. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. So he continues on saying that his least favorite genre is romance because he just doesn't think it ever reads correctly. And yeah. then it gets into some deep, like, I don't know, uh, worries about himself where he says the reason yeah. he hasn't done those ideas and other ideas is that he is time. Well, he's worried about time and he's fearful of it, of the fact that he wants yeah. to. He'll never have the time to do them all. And he fears that he will ruin them all. Which, yeah. you know, pretty sad. <laughs> so, Very. Uh, and then he does end up saying, you know, he does want to draw manga to make people happy, which is good. And then basically they're in the middle of the interview and he's like, oh, uh, I just thought of my last work. So you can, can you guys leave? It straight up kicks yeah. him out. Yeah. So he gives them like a, a I don't know, the, the cover. cover? It, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And he says it's about a girl trying to reach enlightenment in a world of degeneracy. And it's called Cries of Buddha. And then you just get a really cool like cover page, like what you would yeah. expect out of one of the other Tezuka mangas. So that being said, I don't know if this author of this manga is going to be making that. I don't know if that's a thing. He, so maybe, I did, maybe it's like a setup. I, I I was thinking that, yeah. 
he had like a final page that was after the like the manga and it was basically like oh if you didn't like it i enjoyed making it at least kind of thing like yeah. that so i think he just i i i kind of liked it um i don't see it being anything more than what it is like it's not gonna win the contest because you can't expand on it in my opinion you could if he it's like the tales of this guy but i think it was like a one-off and it would have been cool if it was like a, like a whole story based off of mangaka and like stuff yeah. he did yeah and yeah, just yeah. like seeing his struggles with it but i think it was more just like a i don't know like a friendly reminder for what people like that kind of go through like you know definitely like me playing drums and stuff i've had that kind of uh, I want to do music, I want to play, but at the same time, like, there's a risk of failing, and I don't want to do it, so I just don't do it kind of thing. So it was kind of cool to see that, um, and I never really thought about it that way. Um, but, yeah, that was about all I got out of it. Yeah. I liked it, but it's it wasn't not, bad. Not the deepest, doesn't really yeah. uh, provide you with anything, like, super crazy, but you kind of just, like, hop in, and you see, like, a brief glimpse of this guy's life, and that's pretty much yeah. what I got from that. And it's like, yeah, yeah okay, cool. Yeah, I, I think it was really just bare minimum or like not bare minimum i think it was pretty solid as far as what it was trying to do i don't think there was anything special about it but it was good like i didn't hate reading it so yeah that's kind of how it feels well so <laughs> that was interviewing no one by hagiwara diplito i hope i'm saying that right i have no idea I, so i didn't even realize when i was reading it that it read as no one i just thought it was interviewing oh, really? no one or something like that and i was like I guess, I guess. oh cool and now i get it it kind of makes sense. It's a little bit more sad. So his last it's name is Meta. Depolito. 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 That's his last name. So there you go. Correction. So gotcha. we're going to move on to the next one, and that is yours, Josh. Do you want to go ahead and set it up? Uh, so mine was a uh, live line mode. Um, so just to – I'll give you kind of a – And that's by B-E-E-B. -E -E -B. Yeah, I, I can't yeah, find I it anywhere, um, and I forgot to open up that. <laughs> it's, it's, you. It's, it's capital B space, capital E space, capital E with a B emoji before it. So they, they I don't know if that's his pin name or if her pin name. I don't you, know. You brought up a great thing right there, Sam. There's a lot of use of emojis in this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. there is. There Dude, really is. Ev like every other uh, page had it. Oh, Yeah, crap. exactly. So the kind of like synopsis, uh, Sora, I mean, I'm sorry, the main character, March, um, okay, he's the presumed main character. It, he's kind of thrust in what appears to be like a life of luxury. And then he's into this now dangerous world game of gear hunting via some music box. And that's pretty much it. That's all the world building we get. It's yep. just immediately right into it. Um, we're introduced to the first two gear hunters, uh, Kyrie. Um, which is actually her name's Ivy, but we're just gonna go with the uh, Kingdom Hearts references hello. for this. Look, is it because of like, the? I'm calling it as I sees it. It's it is what it is. So they have like familiars um, with them, and they were kind of like foreshadowed from that music box. Like the shadow of the music box was these three characters, um, and they're kind of like defeating Heartless, which are known as Shadows, um, and they're kind of being chased for no I did not reason. get that at all. The, 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 so the people with them are the shadow people that you see at the start? I thought that was like their family. Yeah, um, it's very weird. Um, March has Rose, um, and that's about it. They kind of just have these like cool gear weapons. Um, and then Kyrie or Ivy has Echo. Um, they've Check. already immediately started to ship um, Kyrie and um, Riku, or not Riku, Sora. Sora. Yeah, immediately tried to ship them, um, like within first page of them even talking about each other. So that's great. Um, the threat of these shadows is kind of like ambiguous. They've just, if they touch you, they drain your energy, but that doesn't sound like you die. Um, and that's about it. And then we kind of do a hard cut to um, Butler Ansem and Riku, um, otherwise known Ansem. as. <laughs> <laughs> I was known as Leopard and Lynx. Um, and you find out Lynx has got like, I don't An know, iPad. he's either, he's got, yeah. Well, no, Leopard oh, no. the the familiar. Yeah, 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 Leopard's yeah. the familiar. And Lynx is the gear hunter. Um, and Lynx pretty much has like either daddy issues or he really does not like steampunk butlers. Like he's just rude to him right off the bat. And another thing you kind of notice with this entire thing is English was not the first language that it was written in. So it's genuinely just kind of difficult to read. Uh, I was trying to get the base ideas that they were trying to present and maybe like rewrite the story in my head as we read. 
turns out that the whole thing is just fucking confusing. Um, so yeah, yeah it, it's a combination of you know confusing translations and then even more confusing like direction. So you kind of get this like reveal through um, links that basically he's the emo punk that wants to destroy the status quo kind of thing, and all of a sudden you're cut from all this like slight exposition to random scarred hottie that's just opening like a garage door um and he's communicating with this other team um that's just sitting by some cars and then they hard cut even more so to a gear off is what i'm calling it between march and lynx these are the main character and the presumed bad guy um where we get some grade school sh here shit talking just like i don't know if it's the translation <laughs> they kind of like dumbed it down but it was just like no you're a dummy no you're a dummy i'm not a dummy your mom's a dummy kind of like that's how it felt and march has a friend named river who shows up for all of two panels Lynx attacks them with his gears and river is injured and we find out that uh march can only defend himself with his gears and his familiar can only protect him um because he's outside of this like real world thing uh it's kind of weird so that's Let's just see. This is what I have gotten written. It's a hardcore action sequence commences. In a matter of four pages, River is injured. Lynx gets PTSD, PTSD inducing childhood bullying off. Like he's just ripping into them. Tokyo Drift has been confirmed to be in the universe because they just hard cut to a random scene where they're driving Tokyo Drift style cars. Rose can only protect March and River is totally okay with the bleeding arm and tourniquet. All within four pages. That no, just he goes happens. to the hospital. Hello. But he's not picked up. Like he, he just goes to the hospital. They're like, oh, he's in the hospital. He's not okay. He vanishes. But they, he see, he's even saying, oh man, guys, everybody, calm down. Like I'm totally fine. But now he's in the hospital. He's been, you know, he's off screen. Then out of nowhere, there's like a reveal that there's like a shadow, uh, being a, like a large shadow attacking, and somehow Lynx just has teleportation powers, and he's already in the warehouse that the shadow has appeared in. Lynx is, you know, still getting these teenage insults now. He's he's upgraded from the grade school stuff. He's called um, March a noob, which hit uh, really yeah. hard for me. <laughs> so then March gets like two seconds of cool time. He does like a big slash, then the monster regenerates immediately. And Lynx does all the hard work and actually beats the monster in like one attack. Because he's not a noob. Exactly. He's, he's not a yep. noob. Mm -hmm. And this is when I started thinking, oh, maybe, maybe. Lynx is the good guy and March is the bad guy because here's what happens. Lynx goes to grab the gear that he's won. Apparently these shadows drop gears. Um, what they are, I have no idea. Um, but March goes to grab it and he tries to steal it because he's a sore fucking loser. And, <laughs> <laughs> nice. And he gets caught by some chain that Lynx has and March, his familiar breaks the chain, but again we find out that Lynx can fucking teleport he's already grabbed the gear that was two feet away from march and is on the other side of the map saying ha i got this very tiny gear and we kind of find out like i said earlier river is now in the hospital everything's bad fucking um march is now starting to say like oh you guys have been hurt you know i can't allow you to come with me typical but then you main also... character exactly and their counter argument which solid argument I, I i couldn't find flaws in it we'll come up with a safer plan next time just nailed it. Just nailed it. Um, <laughs> we cut over to Lynx and Leopard talking to each other. And you find out that the gear that uh, Lynx has is a fake, which just throws off the entire gear economy. Um, and apparently they just go to a hardware store and buy fake gears. Again, ruining and just causing inflation in this universe. It's bullshit. I do not like March as a main character. If they're trying to ship that, total asshole. Then they kind of meet up with the family again. The family was intended to be this like cool, like backup. They all have like earpieces and they're talking back and forth to each other. They have done fuck nothing except for have like arguments with each other. Um, they drove in cars and did fuck nothing again. And apparently they drove River to the hospital, kind of still doing nothing. Then they drive off on the sunless sunset in what appears to be a gated community. And that is the end scene. Um, so. Again, reminiscent of kind of Kingdom Hearts, both in like weapon design and confusing edginess. Um, the translation was super weird. I was trying not to dock it because obviously, you know, that's not on no, them I'm... for not having English as their first language. But I, I think you're right about the Kingdom Hearts thing. thing. There's probably like seven other games or mangas that that we have to read, you know, to understand this one. Yeah. 
And, you know, it's got to come out in different... We have to watch the animes, we have to read the mangas, then we have to read the light novels to kind of get the full world. And it yeah, just felt... Yeah. But I will say it, the art was super cool. I thought it was very well designed. Like, there was only some action scenes that I didn't like. Um, and I would have liked more backstory and world building, which is weird because, you know, most of the time we get too much um, in that first chapter. But I felt like literally there was nothing. Uh, we were going to just thrown right into it. And then I don't know what the point of what the fuck they're doing by the end of that. So this has been my TED Talk. I wouldn't knock. So, like, there is a way to do the setup correctly where it's like that opening could have been good where it's like yeah. literally here's what you need to know rich family got it in our grandparents house found a fucking music box now i'm part of a thing yeah. called the gear whatever and yeah. so now i gotta be a gear hunter okay yeah. cool get kind of the basis i get your hunt for gears thank you and then if it was followed up by something spectacular that could have been good yeah um, but it was it was, it was not and so what i kind of have written at the bottom of my notes is the action was really quick but it was still okay Super. I could still follow what was happening. Um, the art was good. I thought the mm -hmm. art was good. Um, the story was crap. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot, a lot of broken English, like a lot. And we mentioned at the beginning that uh, they use like emoticons, and we're not talking about yeah. like phone emoticons. We're talking about like old it's school like a table flip like, emoticons. Early internet, like you draw the emoticons out with like your parentheses and your O's yeah. and like your smiles. Like emoticons. The exactly. first, so the first one I saw, and I'm like, oh okay, that's maybe like her thing because a girl says it yeah. first. And then the next one I saw, it was like it didn't fit in all the chat bubble. Yeah. So yeah, I was, was like, like, oh, is that up. is he trying to say something? <laughs> it's like, and, and, it, then, it, and then it just kept it, showing up, and it's like, oh, they're just yeah. emoticons. It's weird to me because it, it would have been something like if it was a light novel, I kind of would have understood yes. it because you can't get their yeah. facial. It, but the point of a manga is you see their faces. You kind of that's what you're supposed to draw. Um, and yeah, it just seemed very odd. And to your point on like the action, it was super quick. I agree. But the normal problem we have is like we can't follow what's going on in the yeah. action. They did a broader perspective and they said, what if we did that to the whole manga? And you just <laughs> essentially. You're so negative. Not. Oh my God. So, like, I really I apologize to Jose when I picked it last night because I saw it. I'm like, oh, this looks like Kingdom Hearts. This looks cool. And, like, I love gears. I love that aesthetic and stuff like that. And I was like, this looks you're cool. You're total. You're, you're, you're all for, like, the steampunk look and everything. Yeah. I, you know, and I, I was hoping. And the weird part to me was the the translation like the broken english was it devolved over time like i felt in the beginning it was just like oh maybe they missed a word or something and then it just progressively got worse to the point where it was just very basic english and again like i knew i kind of realized that head on and i was like hey you know i'm not going to judge them for it because you know again it's not their fault you know kudos to them for trying to do something outside of their fucking language um but yeah I wrote in here as like author is ESL, which can add to the confusion. However, the story itself is what is truly confusing that it's just, it's all over the fucking place. So could have been like, cool. The idea for it is there. It's just, yeah. you know, missing like, like Sam said, if it was just done differently at the beginning, it would, it would have been a lot better. Uh, a lot of my notes even said, um, just like Josh said a lot. <laughs> and then I, at one point I'm like, hello, I'm confused, <laughs> <laughs> but overall the the idea is there it's just not solid yeah i think it, if they had more coherent like direction it could have like if they had maybe another chapter or more exposition i feel like they could have had something really cool there i don't think but, that would have saved it but, <laughs> um okay well let's let's finish this one with a quote i wrote down from the manga okay only the smarter, the stronger, the faster will win this game. It's the only rules. So that has been Liveline Mode by B space E space E. Uh, and then that's a B emote in the front. Yeah, exactly. But I, I talked with Sam. We're going to get that uh, tattooed on our forearm, all three of us. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned. Can so I, I think I'm going to get mine chest? on my forehead, actually. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Back of the neck, boys. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll just get a tramp stamp then if we're placing it differently. Yeah. All right, okay. well, uh, Jose, you're last up with uh, Common Students, we decided on, by Pepper. Yeah. Common Student, yep, easy name. Uh, right away, I mean, I love the, uh, the like the cover for it. I thought it was pretty cool. Very it cool cover. Cool. When you get into it, you proceed to, like, kind of a voiceover talking about, like, the surrounding area and that, like, takes place uh, kind of in a student city or, like, a like a school almost. 
Yeah. Um, and it's like in a very preppy, really nice part of the town. Um, and you see the kid like running, stereotypical kid. You can tell he's a ginger if you look at the, the picture. He's, he's got okay. a she. Yeah, I thought it was a I she. Don't know. It's a she. It's a she. I'm, but I said he. I'm gonna say a she. It was a top he with. A skirt. So I mean, I don't know if they have ascended <laughs> from gender norms in that, which all the more kudos to them. But at the same time, it at no point was I sure. You couldn't tell, but I, you know, stereotypical student, late to class, rushing, but then boom! All of a sudden, you could get like this plankton lobster-looking <laughs> thing. Did that, it not feel it like Patrick in a lobster outfit, like Patrick from SpongeBob? For some reason, that's the whole vibe I got from that. You've been looking at too many SpongeBob memes. But yeah, uh, that happens. Debris starts falling towards the kid, and he's saved by a hero. I think it's Red Bear. Yeah, yeah, with something Red Bear. Yeah, Red Bear. So he's saved by the Red Bear, uh, which is kind of cool. Like, like it's pretty easy to see what's happening, and then he's communicating with a couple other heroes to bring down uh, the plankton lobster thing, which are all pretty cool. There's the yellow fox and then Blue Moon. Then the yellow fox binds it, and it's got pretty funny effects because if you look at it uh the plankton's eyes are bulging out of his face at some point and then it goes to a blue moon who shoots like meteors at him yeah i feel like yellow fox is a little underpowered in comparison to blue moon the other two blue yeah, yeah blue, blue moon's cool and then Being very red, broken red bear you know re reassures the kid and then immediately goes in for the kill and and in true superhero style they don't look at the explosion Yep, getting you force pose. So. Exactly. Yeah. They do have a sick ass pose. Yeah. Dude, I was loving the whole vibe of this. It was very, like, slight cheesy. They are getting the jokes in, in there, too. Oh, it was great. I, I like it. And then all of a sudden, twist. Common students. Uh, J I was going to say J.J. Abrams. James oh J. Abrams. Oh, my God. Is that his name? Oh, my God. I just put James. I didn't put together at all. He was J.J. Abrams. G I did not put that together at all. Yeah, his his full name is James Jacob Abrams, and he's 21 years old. But it's it's pretty crazy. They, they all talk about how cool and crazy the effects are and how real it looks and all that stuff. And they talk about how he has an important night and that everything should be fixed or else the headmaster's going to get in tr uh, get them in trouble. Yeah. Then pro like, proceeds to them having technology that immediately fixes the school. Uh, super cool. It um, is super cool. I was like, damn. Yeah, like, that was pretty cool. Funny. I was like, huh, this is an interesting... Thing. it's like a, he's like a tony stark almost yeah uh, then it proceeds to him being interviewed on some talk shit some gossip show with some lady um who starts talking about him a, a little bit about himself how he's like 21 years old he founded this company that uh basically has him helping out the world eventually it's called out, out of space tech i think tech i tech. think I, I couldn't tell if that was a c or an o yeah, and he just talks a little bit about himself, talks about how he was the oddball in the family and just kind of came up with his own idea, and then immediately introduces the three heroes. Which Wait, are, real like, quick before you go, Jose. Did anybody else have to look up the word paroxysm? Yeah, I didn't hey. know what it was. <laughs> okay. I saw that, and I, I left that for a smarter person. Okay, than me. paroxysm, yeah. a sudden attack or violent expression of a particular emotion. Similar to spasm. So it's basically like a spasm. An emotional spasm? Yeah. That seemed like you lost half the audience when that happened, right? <laughs> I like, would have preferred a spasm. I read that. I was like, what the fuck is that word? I've never yeah, seen that I, word in my life. I was hoping for more of like an exposition after that for that. Yeah. Just like keep reading, let it go. And it never came back up until you brought it up. So yeah, they, they introduced the three heroes. Uh, Hugo, who's the red panther, red bear. I want to call him red panther. Uh, Matthew, who... Is the yellow fox and then Sasha the blue moon, uh, and apparently Matthews got narcolepsy. I like falls that. asleep. I yeah, like he good. falls asleep in the middle yeah. of the interview. Uh, you know, just makes uh, James face palm. But it was um, kind of weird. This is where it like started kind of bugging me because you know yeah. they already had the plot twist where it was like a TV show that they were recording. Yeah, so it's he, like he starts to think for a second and he kind of questions the whole thing and then he like buzzes out and then has a narcolepsy attack. Is there, like, more to it? Like, is he, like, hey, wait, this doesn't seem all that right, and then he gets knocked out because he thinks too hard kind of thing? It, maybe his brain just got overused and he True. passed out. Um, I, I, It then kind of cuts to the the lady asking uh, the rest of the heroes a bunch of questions, to which some of them are like, oh, we were lucky to be chosen, kind of like fate thingy, all this kind of back and forth. 
going between them and she then turns back to james and starts asking him more aggressively like oh well what are you going to come up with next is there's going to be a villain boss what's what's going to happen like how do you film this reality tv show but they're heroes kind of thing all at the same time yeah and he talks about the discrete uh inventions he created which allows him to record and listen to audio at the same time very discreetly which is kind of cool but also very weird it goes back to the interviewing lady and she keeps asking him stuff where he starts fiddling with his phone and creates a fake alert so he has to take off so that part was confusing to me because i didn't know if the creature really was from outer space or if it was just special effects well that's kind of the real at the end right so yeah uh so they end up booking it like they're like oh we gotta go everybody get your suits and stuff to which they keep talking about they're like yeah is there gonna be a villain all this and that and it just you see james just looking up at the sky and then it just pans out you know like that slow like it's the city then it's the continent then it's the earth and they're in outer space and then it's revealed that there was a bunch of monsters or aliens yeah Mm -hmm. alien monster things yeah yeah i I don't know they kind of look like dinosaurs kind of don't they all have i'm assuming four eyes they had weird names too. They like put numbers in for vowels and shit. I don't know if you guys saw that, but it was yeah, kinda... it was it was a little unique. But they talk about how they lost this round, but their plan is to still destroy everything. That's pretty much where it leaves off. It started off great. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool and an interesting twist. So I Just... I thought I thought totally the opposite. I thought what? it started off so generic, like oh my god we're gonna go this fucking route it's the same thing i've seen a million times cheesy like, shonen fucking superhero bullshit like basically my hero academia but with one punch man monsters mm-hmm. yeah. um and then yeah. it switched to it being like a tv show and i was like okay that's different like that's interesting yeah. i like that and then it switches again at the end to be in the fucking exact thing and i was like wow we what a fucking one chapter swoop de whoop that we just did there <laughs> <laughs> I so, see I'm in the middle. I liked it because of those double twists where it was like so as Jose was talking, I'm starting to wonder he, uh JJ Abrams basically says, "Oh, I was like a outsider in my family." I'm starting to wonder if he's one of the alien aliens? monsters. Yeah. Hmm. And oh, he's, yeah. He's down there and he's using twist all Twist number tech. 3. It's like Goku, like he's he yeah. likes the earth now, so he's trying to save it. Yeah. yeah, and but they so the entire time they portrayed as oh it's a TV show it's just special effects even the kids that are saving the world are doing this and I'm wondering if like he's mind controlling them and they actually are chosen ones and that's why I was saying like the yellow fox when he starts to question he just has a narcolepsy attack. Well, they they like, talk about they do mention that they weren't they didn't even audition they were yeah, just they like reached, they were just reached out to you out of nowhere and they're like yeah mm-hmm. we're yeah. so grateful. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was cool when he was talking about as well how it's a mix of like a series in a reality show, whereas the parts of them being kids are actually real. Like that's just them yeah. living their life. And then he puts in the monster or we think he puts in the monster fights. Yeah. And so it's basically Power Rangers, but the kid stuff is real is basically yeah. the setup on that. And all their suits do everything that they, they said yeah. they did. It's not yeah, like yeah. they were fake. but Yeah, they because have, like, they actually little... destroy stuff. And then they do, like yeah. we mentioned, they put it back together. Yeah, so that would be his space tech or out of space mm-hmm. tech or something like that. And as I just said, the name of his company, I'm assuming he's actually part <laughs> yeah. of the that, 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 that makes it more realistic. But yeah, uh, I like the beginning of it just because it was so simple. Okay, did any of you guys mention or notice, by the way, that I'm pretty sure there was a box of missing text on one of the pages? Oh. Um, on Don't. page 13, bottom left corner, there's a box. Like, that would yeah, be like an exposition right. box. Oh. And it's just blank. And then if you go to the next page, it, it sounds like it should be starting off from something else. So, like, you're I had to go right. back and read it yeah, and try and right. figure out what happened. Yeah. Which is not no. really a docking point, but I just, like, there's a missing nope. thing of text in there. Yeah, it's just random. But I do remember reading the next page, page 15, and being like, wait, what the More fuck? More confused. Like, yeah. It was kind of confusing. It was in the middle of a sentence. Yeah. It was yeah. like, I think the next one starts off with, but this is like, oh, well, but what? <laughs> it's like, yeah. what, what did I miss? But so, yeah, I, I, I liked it. And the art was like unique 
and kind of fun mm-hmm. and the i love the shrimp jokes like i was dying yeah. they were fucking killing Definitely. me it's like classic power rangers it, yeah. yeah i felt straight up like power rangers and i was like this is cool i think that's probably why i liked it though it was like kind of generic enough to where it was this and then it reminded me of power rangers the twist was cool like the whole it's a it's a tv, TV show. show but you know it's real but it's not real but then just lost me at the end and i was like Listen, all right the twist has been there done that okay yeah definitely. there's there's an anime i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head but it starts from a guy who just wants to be like basically fucking moomin rider from one punch man where he like he goes around and he wants to be like a sentai ranger and it eventually keeps going higher and escalating escalating until eventually like it is real and he is a power ranger and he's fighting aliens and it's like it that's just it been there done that got you yeah i i'm i like i want to read more of this like this is the one where i felt like it had a cool story whether or not it's been done before i liked the the plot twists but i, I want to find out is jj abrams essentially like <laughs> this guy controlling the whole situation yeah. again the fact that we're zordon just out now. He, yeah oh yeah jj yeah. abrams is the zordon yeah, I don't know. It's kind of cool. I, I, I liked it. I, I think you it. pretty much nailed on the head. He's probably an alien, and he's trying to protect the Earth. Um, yeah. So, Sam. But, yes. I feel like I've got no solid, like, for or against on any of these. Um, okay, what's here your, we go. Sam's your... review of all three. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Did not really like any of them. <laughs> so... Yeah. I, I hate getcha. to say that, but uh, it's just, you know uh interviewing no one i mean not my thing different yeah really yeah, not different. my thing and i don't know what it's trying to say or what it's trying to do the art I was, was good I, I thought the art was fine but it's like shrug on that one yeah then I you know that. like live line i really liked the art i thought the art was good in live line yeah but that was pretty much his only redeeming quality is that the art was good and that i can actually follow the action scenes on it but then it's oh, like, cool. you know, uh, shonen manga that's supposed to be all about story, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Who who knows? And it, uh, honestly, I shouldn't have to hold it against it, but the, the broken English was really bad. And yeah. the uh, emoting in the chat was weird. Yeah. It, it was a combo of those two things. It was like, yeah, this wasn't. Yeah. I thought it was going to be the same thing where it was. Uh, it only belonged to that one chick. And it yeah. was very mm-hmm. much like I know Josh went hard. On it. it was very much like Kingdom Hearts like very yeah. like to the yeah. shadows they were fighting and everything is super like kingdom hearts yeah and then came in students it's a cool it's no a cool it's cool premise. but came in students is probably that like obviously i think we are all going to pick that one because it yeah. is the least uh i don't know it, it does it does the least, least amount of offenses of years out, yeah, of, out it, of all like, of them it has enough of a story to carry it and then it just uh, i thought it the, was like the art is good Based off of the cover page where, like, his mask is shattering, I thought it was going to be something completely different. I was like, damn, this yeah. is, like, going to be super like a, serious, super yeah, cool. Yeah, like a ninja thing because it yeah. reminded me of the the Ombu Black Op mask. The cover page was cool. I was Very like, oh, shit. Looking. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was like, it got me, like, you know, like, uh, watching the superhero fight and then the twist. I was like, oh, okay, crazy. Yeah. So it's like it's really just a whole big set. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah. And then it just lost me after that, you know. See, that's sad because I, I kind of like that it was real, but I, I like how it's not real to everyone else. Like, it's, like, I, magic kind of thing. Uh, I CGI. think it, it Yeah, I, I think it could have been cool if they just kept the whole it's a TV show thing and him trying to one-up everything plus everything else kind of happening outside of the universe that he's made. So I would say, yeah, Common Students is my favorite of the three. I don't think it was all that bad in comparison to what Sam says. But yeah, you like it. I had already, yeah. yeah, I liked it. And, but... You know, if we're doing like a hierarchy thing based off all the ones we previously let one, this is not, this isn't in the realm. This isn't in there. So, yeah. So, I mean, it's got stuff, but it's like, I just feel like, you know, I have done all that already. So, yeah. What I more can you. I say? Does anybody have any last words to say about any of the manga? Because, uh, common students is our winner, obviously. Yeah. Well, yep. Our un- congratulations, yeah. Pepper. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to Pepper. Uh, Josh liked your manga. So, congratulations. Yeah. I, I did like it. It's just yeah, yeah I, I I liked it for uh, what it was. <laughs> you could have just said I liked it. <laughs> okay, uh, so 
Thanks for watching. This has been the Jump Tezuka for this week where we read the three mangas and we'll be back next week doing another three. What three? We don't know till the day of, so don't ask yeah. us. So thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you guys like the video. Let us know if you're submitting anything. We get a, quite a few of those now of people submitting their own. Uh, eventually we'll get to reading all the ones that you guys submitted. I was thinking maybe you could do like a few fan submissions all together. That way we should on the community. Yeah, as you guys saw how rather. negative Josh was this episode. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. He's just the negative. Last two Nancy, episodes have been negative as fuck. Okay, let's just be real. So I'm the Simon Cowell of this team, and you're Say who you want to be. You want to be Paula, or do you want to be uh, Randy? Randy Jackson. I, I'm Paula. Uh, that's a that's no for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I I think that is accurate as fuck, actually. All right. Well, thanks for watching.